Hi guys, G.I. Joe here, and welcome back to my bunker in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I wanted to come to you today and talk to you about uh, a potential strategy or strategies for dealing with um, a move that Sireblood has in one of his videos. Uh, the video is his UK strategy, and it's an excellent video, and if you haven't seen it, I will put the link in the description and you definitely need to go watch it. Um, it's about 30, 35 minutes, and it's very fascinating. It's, it's kind of atypical of what normally happens, and um, I thought it was really, really good. And so I've been kind of racking my brain here and watching the video several times, trying to think of a way that maybe Italy could respond to that. Um, this is not tested, tried, and true. It's just more of an experiment. But uh, I thought I would kind of throw it up on the web and see what you guys thought and maybe open it up to any other suggestions you might have. So uh, just so you know, first of all, we have, at least what I've been exposed to, are, are two great strategies for UK in the Middle East, and, and, and the Mediterranean, rather. One is Sire Bloods, which I referred to, and there will be a link in the description. The other is General Hand Grenades. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with that, he has a video where he talks about his Middle Earth strategy, where he kind of deals with uh, building an industrial complex, um, coming over here like this, and uh, taking Persia, Eastern Persia, and if I believe, he even attacks Iraq, and then he, he brings some pieces over, I think, his um, uh, me mechanized infantry and kind of crosses the Suez, comes into Iraq. I think he brings some planes over as well, but it primarily deals with uh, building a base of operations in the Middle East so that he can have some fluidity of going either west into North Africa, north into the Soviet Union, or east to kind of support and reinforce India, which I think is a great strategy. Um, but in that strategy, he General Hand Grenade deals with Taranto, so he definitely attacks season 98 up to 97 and takes care of the uh, Italian Navy. But this video is, like I said earlier, is in response to uh, a potential strategy for responding to Sired Blood's strategy. And um, so here are my thoughts. I've got the board set up based on what Sired Blood had in his video. So what you have here is Britain has brought down these pieces from um, over there from New Brunswick, Nova Scotia. He's brought down uh, I think a tank and an infantry with the transport. He also brought down two men down here from England with the transport, assuming it was left over after the battle in England. Um, he also, we have a fighter from Gibraltar and we have a bomber down here. So this kind of negates the potential for Italy to take Gibraltar in the first round and probably the second round and maybe even beyond there. But he did bring the cruiser from C zone 91 over across into here, into 96. He also used the fighter from Malta, as well as the tactical bomber that was originally in 98, took out the Italian Navy and then retreated the Navy that was in C zone 98, as well as his, as well as his fighter and tech bomber um, back into C zone 81, I believe. And so um, he didn't take care of anything in here as of yet. He, he spoke about maybe moving some pieces around here, but he didn't actually do it. So I'm really not sure what he would do. Um, so I, I'm really making this video in response to what I actually saw in the video. And um, so anyway, so let's, let's get going. So I was thinking, um, typically the Italian Navy would not exist right now, or at least not at least in the capacity that you see it. So chances are Italy's not going to have their navy for more than one or two rounds. F. And what we need to do is to figure out what can we do with this navy. Now, I think if I understand Sired Blood correctly, and, and correct me if I'm wrong there, Sired Blood, but the purpose of retreating back to here is so that he can maintain his navy because he just lost his navy up here in England with Germany attacking, of course. And so 
the concept, which I think is a good concept, is why would you want to lose your entire Navy, essentially, in the first round of play? Uh, that makes it very difficult for UK to have any type of hold on North Africa. So I think it's a very sound strategy. Um, so my thing is, if he's wanting to save this Navy for as long as possible, and if the Italian Navy is simply on living on borrowed time, then... Let's go ahead and get rid of this Navy if possible and essentially make it to where Taranto kind of happened and happens hopefully on our terms, not UK's terms. So let's see what happens. Now, my thoughts were, now I noticed that right here originally he left Transjordan open. Now, I'm not saying that that would actually happen. So the scenario you're about to, to witness is assuming that Transjordan was left open. Now, I would think an experienced player probably would not let that happen. And I know General Hand Grenade, in his Middle Earth strategy, he actually kind of has a wall. I think he backs away from Alexandria, and he has kind of, uh, he kind of shores up the seashore here across the, across the canal and across into Iraq and over into uh, the Middle East. So this would probably not work against General Hand Grenade's Middle Earth strategy, but uh, let's assume that, at least based off what I saw in the video, that this is left open. So, my thinking is, we have two transports, Italy does, and these transports are probably not going to last more than one round. So, we need to use them as best as possible. And if Italy is wanting to get some type of grasp on North Africa, then, then we probably need to use them right now. Now, we have two options, I think. I think we can take this transport here, as well as that one, and we can grab a couple guys, or two guys each, and we can either come down to Libya, we can come down to Tobruk, and those are all sound possibilities. Um, but of course, in order for that to happen, we have to take out the cruiser in Seasonal 96. So let's go ahead and move some ships into there to make that happen. We've got a cruiser here, a sub here, and we will have a sneak attack, and we've got a battleship and a cruiser. Now, I'm leaving the destroyer right here for now because what I want to do is, again, I'm, I'm assuming in this scenario that Transjordan is left over, left open. So what I would do is consider to bring the transports here, since this is a naval base, one, two, three. Okay, with that, I'm going to bring four infantry. Okay, so I'm taking Transjordan. And then my destroyer, I think I'm going to do the same. One, two, three. Now, I know the rules, if I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong, the rules say that you that a transport itself cannot keep naval units from passing through the sea zone. Um, so I would assume that that would mean on a non-combat move as well. So just to be safe, I would bring the destroyer in. Now, if for some reason the British Navy could not pass through here after taking, of course, they'd have to take care of Transjordan first to get the canal. But if the British Navy somehow could not pass through the canal or through C-Zone 98, even with only transports, then I might move the destroyer back here. But I'm pretty sure that that destroyer needs to be there. So um, the last thing I would do is take my two fighters, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to take care of this uh, French Navy. Now, I've tested this a couple times. The rolls have gone mostly in my favor, to where I've come out either unscathed or uh, only maybe losing one fighter. So we'll see what happens in this scenario. Now, that, that's leaving two infantry here, but with my $10, my 10 IPCs that I'm going to purchase, uh, I'm going to purchase three infantry. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put these on here just so I don't forget. And uh, I know I'm going out of sequence here, but this is just to, uh, so I don't forget later on. Um, all right, so I'm not going to mess with anything here. I am going to come down here, and I'm going to come up, and I'm going to attack like this to put a little bit more pressure on here. Now, of course, this is if the UK does not reinforce Anglo-Egyptian Sudan. If they do reinforce it, or maybe bring some troops over from the Middle East, then 
or from India, then this scenario may not be able to happen. Now, if, if you notice real quickly, I have done a little bit of movement, which I think might be kind of typical for some people. And this is kind of reminiscent of General Hand Grenade strategy, I believe, where he steps into from West India into Eastern Persia. He kind of grabs that, and then he brings a transport over and plops some guys down here on Persia and activates those uh, pro-allied neutrals. So uh, I'm assuming that that's going to happen, and just so I can kind of see what the Middle East is going to actually, or the Mediterranean and North Africa will look like. So let's uh, continue. So I've taken this. Um, as far as combat is concerned, uh, amphibious landings need to happen first, but there's no battle here, so that is there. Uh, let's let's take care of this battle down here first. So I have one attacking at one, miss, and the artillery and infantry attacking at two. Okay, so that's a hit. So he's gone, and now I have a British attacking or defending at two and that's a four so that's gone so that's a miss so okay so they've taken that so now they've gone up two IPCs now let's take care of this battle right here I'm gonna do my sneak attack with my submarine okay I got a miss there I don't know if you can see that and then I have two cruisers at three and that's a hit. So he's gone. Now let's have the British cruiser defend at a three or less. And that's a hit. So we're going to trade that. Take the sub out and trade the that. Now I guess I could I could tip over my battleship, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to need that in the oncoming battle that's going to happen down here. So I want to keep my battleship uh good to go so let's take let's let's do this battle up here um, I've got two fighters at three or less okay I've got two hits right there so he's gone so I've definitely taken care of the French Navy so now let's do a French a French uh, destroyer defending at two that is a miss and a French cruiser defending at three. That is a hit. So yeah, that's kind of typical. Um, in my practice sessions, that seems to consistently happen. Um, of course, if Italy rolls horribly and doesn't get any hits at all, or only one hit in the first round, then you're kind of open, you're opening yourself up to lose uh, two aircraft, if not more. So. Let's go ahead and land my Air Force back here, and I am going to land it by the air base so that I have a wider range here in the Mediterranean. So now, here's what it would look like. Now, after this, so what we have here is we've kind of enclosed the UK here a little bit, and now what the UK is, is forced to do is they, first of all, have to take Transjordan before they can come through the Suez Canal. So in order to do so, I think they can easily do that, but they're gonna have to take some pieces off of Cairo, off of Egypt, and go into here. They might even use the Air Force, and, um, and uh, but nonetheless, I think they can easily take Transjordan. So let's say, uh, how would they do that? Let's see, let's come across in here. Come across there, come across here, here. Um, let's see here. I could bring the transport. You have a couple options here. I might use the transport to bring the infantry over. That way I could use my cruiser as an offshore bombardment. But if I do that, then I can't take my cruiser I cannot take my cruiser through the canal on a non-combat move. Um, so, not sure what would happen there. Um, let, let's not, okay? What I would do is I'd probably use the Air Force. 
That way I could wipe them out quickly because my Air Force could then meet me on the other side of the canal. Now, if I'm not mistaken, again, if, if this is a... If I'm making this mistake, then it actually works in the benefit of Italy. So, but once this is cleared, I'm assuming that the the British Navy can non-combat move through here. But now they can't because there's a destroyer. Now, if my destroyer was not there, I think they could go straight through. But since my destroyer is there, they have to have a combat move happen. So what I've essentially done is I've kept the British Navy out of the Mediterranean for not only this turn, but it should be the turn after. Well, at least they have to do combat on the next turn. So I've kind of thrown a kink into their system. So let's see, I've got one, two, three. Oh, let's take this transport out of here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six versus four. They actually need a little bit more than that, I think. So see, that, that with, with that saying, then I might go ahead and use the, the cruiser since we can't non-combat through there anyway because that destroyer is blocking them. So I'd have a, a offshore bombardment, um, two at two. And uh, of course those would be packaged together. Those would be packaged together. You got an attacking at three and a four. Some combined arms going on. So I, I would think that this would be taken care of. I'm not going to roll this out because I don't want this video to be too long. I'm already at what, 15, 16 minutes. So let, let's say that uh, they take this out, we defend, and we hit them, you know, a couple times. But let's say that they get me, and let's say that they end something like that, okay? And England takes it back. So um, so now the, the, the planes would have to come back here and land. But, and then over here, Britain would have to make some type of decision on what they're going to do with Gibraltar. Now, some people might think, well, you're, you're leaving Rome kind of open. Your navy is not blockading them. But that is true. But with only two transports, with only two transports, uh, they could bring four pieces. The fighter cannot reach. The bomber, let's see, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, four, five, six. The bomber might be able to come over and then maybe land in southern France, but I'm not so sure they would want to do that since it only defends at one. Plus part of this move, I might come into southern France with Italy. I'm really only dealing with the Mediterranean right now. But um, So I, I don't think that, that Italy is at all at risk at being taken over by this, uh, this amphibious assault here. Um, so then what would happen, I would assume on the next turn, is you know the British Navy would come through here. They would fight this battle here. Like this, let's not take the transport. They would fight this battle here. Um, they would probably only, well, they, they would probably do some type of combined thing with the, let's see here. We would have one, two, three, four. The fighter couldn't make it. One, two, three, four. No. Oh, they could. They could land back on there. So then if the fighter came over, one, two, three, they could land on Malta. The bomber could do the same. So what you have here, I think the British could take out both of these navies, you know, and they may, they might even consider bringing down uh, uh, some fighters from, uh, let's see, would that work? Fighter base, let's see, we go one, two, three, four, five. No, I don't think that would work. Unless I go to one. Yeah, I don't think the fighters could reach down there. Um, I don't think so. But nonetheless, even if, if they could, then they're going to take out this navy easily with their air force and then that navy with that. But the problem is then Britain has lost some very vital pieces right here because they need this air force in defense of uh, London in case of a um, Operation Sea Lion. So... That would be a trade I would be willing to make, I think, especially if my German counterpart is considering an Operation Sea Lion here sometime soon. So I'm kind of luring the Air Force out into the open. Now, let's say that Britain doesn't take the bait. And they don't come in here and they don't, they don't do that. Let's say that they do something else with the Air Force. Uh, let's say that they use this Air Force to come in here and just make sure that that Navy is taken care of. Well, then what we're doing is we have this 
Navy that would easily be taken care of. I might get one hit, might, might not. And if so, they would just lose a destroyer. So, um, well, let's just go ahead and roll that real quick. I'm gonna defend for my destroyer. Miss, okay, so not. So they're, they're sitting kind of pretty right in here. Now, at that point, what we've done is, the whole purpose of the British Navy coming down into Sea Zone 81 was to protect them and so they could keep their Navy. So now that they're in the Mediterranean, I'm going to lose this Navy. As I said before, I shouldn't have it in the first place, okay? So what I'm going to do now is now I've lured them back into the Mediterranean. I can now attack. I can now attack and attack, and I'm probably going to lose this. I'm probably going to lose this, but in the process, I'm probably going to take out the British Navy. So let's do this battle real quick. Okay, let's continue here. Uh, just to recap, we, um, we the, the British Navy originally retreated back to here, and um, the Italians, uh, they left Transjordan open. The Italians came down here, took this, to block the British Navy down here for one more turn. And the Air Force came over and took out the French Navy, and then so they lost one fighter. And what has happened now is the British Navy has come back into here. They've taken out my destroyer and two transports without any, any damage whatsoever. Um, my Navy took out the cruiser here and is consolidating here. And so now, finally, we have a, a battle that's about to happen. I'm coming in here like this. And uh, I'm bringing my Air Force down from southern Italy. And uh, let's roll this out and see what happens. Now, um, I'm okay with losing this because, like I said before, um, I didn't plan on having this anyway. And um, I've already lost a fighter. I'm probably, I, might, I might very well lose this fighter as well. Um, however, if I scrambled here in Taranto, I probably would have lost these pieces anyway. So I feel like I'm kind of on borrowed time here a little bit. So... I want to take out as much of this stuff as I can before they get to do some real, real damage. So let's roll this out and see what happens. I've got uh, three attacking at three, two cruisers and a fighter. Okay, I've got one hit. That's not great. And two at four. Okay, that's two hits. Or two more hits. So a total of three hits total. Now, here's where, here's where uh, UK is going to have to make a decision. Of course, they could lose the two destroyers, okay? And then they're going to have to decide either lose a cruiser or they could, they could tip their aircraft carrier, which is probably what I would do because I'm right here at a naval base, so I can easily uh, repair that damage. So let, let's just tip that. Plus, my fighters can land there if I... Uh, UK's fighters can land in Egypt if want to. So, um, so now uh, let's... Let's roll the defense out. So we have three that defended, the two cruisers and the aircraft carrier. Three defending at two. Uh, one hit, okay. I'm gonna tip my battleship. And then I've got two defending at three. One hit. And then a fighter defending at four. Hit, so it's two more hits. So, uh, I guess let's lose the Navy, because I was probably going to lose those anyway at Taranto. So, um, so here's where we're at. Whoops, wrong thing there. All right, so uh, let, let's go on here, because if I get any more hits, UK is going to have to make a decision on, are they going to lose the Navy, which is what they didn't want to happen, or are they going to pick their Air Force, which is uh, crucial for the defense of, of, of London and uh, India eventually. So let's see what happens. We've got one fighter at three. i got a hit. And I've got two at four. Okay. And another hit. Okay. So that's two more hits. So... Um, wow, so they're going to have to make a decision here. Um, I guess I would probably lose the cruiser, one that costs less, and I could repair that. Um, let's lose a fighter. No, I defend more to fighter. Let's lose the attack bomber. Costs a little bit more, but this defends higher. So, all right, so um, I'm probably going to be gone after this 
but uh, let's see what we have. Okay, Britain is going to roll uh, one at uh, aircraft carrier at two. That's a miss. And a, a, a cruiser and a tack bomber at three. Oh, both misses, holy cow. And a fighter at four. That's a hit. So I'm gonna lose my plane. These pieces are off the board. So now I'm, I'm gonna keep going. Uh, I'm gonna keep going. So my hope is I can take all that out. Let's see what happens. And look, I know this is kind of a suicide mission, but uh, like I said, I, I, I'm, I'm playing with borrowed pieces. I shouldn't even have these pieces. So I've gotta do something to, to really weaken the UK here. So let's see what happens. Uh, two at four. Two hits. How about that? Boom. All right. And let's defend uh, an aircraft carrier at two. Miss. And a fighter at four. A hit. So, um, so these two pieces are gone. And... I guess I would lose... The battleship. Let's see here, one, two, three. They can attack me. Uh, let's lose the bomber, I guess. I mean, some of you, you know, that's just a choice, I guess. Some of you might want to keep the keep the bomber to kind of do some other stuff in the med. Um, so that could go either way, I guess, because over here, what I see is a destroyer could come in there. Two against four. I like the favor there. If I don't have the battleship there, of course, I can eventually retreat this back here and repair it. But, um, so, based on this scenario, it looks as if, at least with a little bit of, uh, you know, maybe the, the dice gods in your favor a little bit. And, uh, of course, I know UK had some bad rolls there, but, you know, that, that happens. Um, there is at least a potential for negating this this uh this move down here and and like i said italy's not going to have that navy anyway after two rounds so why not if they're going to be gone why not take out theirs as well and um so anyways uh thoughts on this again this is not a, a strategy that's been played out in the game necessarily and of course as with any strategy it all depends on how people react to what you do but um, I, I, I'm just kind of doing some ideas and thinking. Uh, like I said, since I can't be up there in Toronto, uh, I've kind of got the itch to play and uh, haven't been able to here lately. So I thought I'd give this a whirl and see what happens. But um, let me know what you think. And uh, hopefully I didn't make any mistakes or too many major ones at least. And, uh, you know, I will say that the Transjordan thing, if that was not left open... I could still have brought my pieces down here. In fact, that might have even just been a better move because then they, they might still be alive rather than just sacrifice them there. And, but ha if I'd have done that, I probably would have still brought in at least a destroyer here to block him from at least coming all the way up into, uh, into southern Italy and that way forcing a sea battle in C-Zone 98 as opposed to C-Zone 97 for Taranto. So uh, thoughts on this, guys. Um, and again, just some ideas. And I uh, always like, you know, thinking through some different things and coming up with some different strategies, especially to counteract some excellent strategies that I see going on elsewhere. So hope you enjoy that, and uh, please let me know what you think. Thanks, guys.